everyone, here is how I did this smocking design that was inspired by Prince Louis's shirt. From the photos that I could find, this is the best representation of the smocking design. But I'm sure it's not an exact copy, so to get started, I pleated 14 half space rows, which does include two holding rows. So I'm only going to be smocking across 12 of these half spaces. Hope that makes sense. And I'm using this blue color, but of course you can switch that up or even do a combination of colors. After all, it is a sewing, so you do you. The first row begins with the cable stitch and with any of these stitches, preparation is key. I like to take each strand of the DMC embroidery floss and separate it from the others. I'm going to be using three strands for all of these stitches and so separating it, I kind of just run it through between my thumb and index finger to help get any of that twist out, like any of the tension. The name of the game here when smocking with multiple strands of floss is to keep those twists out. You want the strands of floss to be flat right next to each other. That makes your to just look really pretty. So to secure your thread, you can tie a knot onto the end of your floss or you can tie onto your fabric using that loop method that I've shown in many of my other videos and I will be showing in this video when I tie off. I kind of alternate between methods, just do whatever works for you. So like I said, that first row is the cable stitch. So I'm coming up on the first pleat and I'm just going to be going over and doing the cable stitch. And you want to pull, you know, so it's so it's snug, but you don't want to pull so it's tight. If you pull too tight, it sort of just squishes your pleat and it doesn't look very pretty. You want it to still be plump looking. <laughs> and you can see here how I'm untwisting my thread. The cable stitch in particular is kind of a hard stitch to make it look pretty. You don't want any gaps in between your stitches and you want the, you know, like any other of the stitches, you want those threads to be flat. So everything lays really nice and it doesn't have any twist into them. And when I I say don't have any twists I mean you only need to concentrate on like the bottom part of your floss the part that's going to be making that stitch so you don't need to concentrate on the entire length not having twists you just want that bottom little section not to have any twists and then when you untwist your thread you know your floss rather for stitches later on well the previous ones are already intact so you're not going to bother them if that makes sense so I just continue and I do the cable stitch all along this first row. As you can see, I have already constructed this outfit. That is my preference whenever I can. Smock after, you know, constructing, I do that. It's not always possible, but I try to do it whenever I can. And I do have another video, another full sewing tutorial that goes on and explains how I constructed this little shirt. So there you have it. I have all my cables and overall, I'm fairly happy with that. There's no gaps and, and not really any twists in there. So I am moving on to the next part. Again, I'm threading up three strands of embroidery floss and I'm tying it on with a knot at the end but sometimes I do it with the loop method that I'd use to tie off with it's it's all the same. I don't know. It's all depending on what my preference is at the time, what I'm feeling. So I'm coming up here and basically I want to start kind of like with the cable. So you can see my previous cable, I started up and then I went down, I went up and down and up and down. So with this one, I am starting up. That way I'm going to be offset a little bit. Does that make sense? I hope so. And now I'm going down to that first half space and I'm going to make a little peak here. Here. So I am going to do three little cable stitches together. I've got my first one and then I'm going to go down for my second and I'm going to go up for my third. Again, make sure those threads are not twisted. That is the, kind of the pain in the, in the butt part about smocking with embroidery floss is that you're constantly making sure that they are not twisted. I got that last stitch a little bit too snug so I'm just loosening her up so it's more plump and not so squashed looking. And then I'm going back up to the cable stitch and here is what I'm trying to say is that you see how it's altered like I, I'm not just sandwiching a previous stitch to a previous stitch. I'm altering those cable stitches. Oh, I hope that's making sense. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue that same pattern until I get to the end of this row. And there you can see I am done with that row. That last stitch right there is only one stitch. Nobody is going to notice. It's going to be a little secret between you and I. And when this is being worn by your little one, no one is going to 
think anything of it. I do not count my pleats. I have a video that goes over that and either I am pleasantly surprised that they they work out evenly a good majority of the time or you get into a situation like this where you just have one stitch and it's no big deal. At least I don't think it is. So now I'm going down two half rows so you can see I've skipped one thread and then I've gone on to the next the next row, the next thread and I'm coming up and I am going to be doing, I believe this is called the outline stitch. I get the outline and the stem stitch confused because they're just basically the, uh, the opposite of each other. One goes above, one goes below and I, I get confused sometimes. But I think this is the outline stitch. I will correct myself if I'm wrong and I basically am doing, it's basically the same as the cable stitch except, except for altering you're keeping your thread above all your stitches and you can see how that causes your um, your stitches to slant okay and you don't have to like remember which way the slant goes because you can just put your thread you know if you put your thread up you can kind of see what that angle is going to be and so you know that if your thread stays up it's gonna be at that angle and doing the stitch underneath keeps it at that angle whereas the reverse is true if you keep your thread down and then do your stitches above you've got the opposite angle so at this this point I'm looking at my design and I'm going to the halfway point roughly I'm doing the halfway point um, that halfway peak okay so at this point I am stopping so I'm five spaces away from the middle of that middle peak if that makes sense so I'm going to the peak that's the most in the center and I'm going to the middle of that peak and basically I'm going to be five steps away I'm going to be doing I stitch at the bottom blah blah I stitch at the bottom and then three going up that trellis and then I stitch at the top and then again just doing the same thing coming down doing a three step trellis coming down and then the fifth stitch right then fourth depending on how you're counting is going to go back into the outline stitch so I'm going to switch gears and now keep my thread above all of my stitches like I did you know in the previous to start out this row and just keep that thread above so I've got that nice little angle to my stitches again and I'm gonna do this all the way until the end of that row and now I'm skipping another row and so I've gone down two rows I've gone down to that second uh, thread below the last row that I've worked on and again I'm going to be doing the stem stitch sorry the outline stitch the one that goes above okay so I'm keeping my thread above 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 all these stitches so I have that same angle as what I previous you know did on that previous row so they're slanting the same way again you don't have to remember which way your thread's going to slant you can just pull your thread up like before you do your stitches like right here you can see which angle it's going to be and so keeping you know putting a stitch below that is going to keep your thread at that angle it's going to kind of lock it down in place and again I am stopping here so basically what I did is I'm doing this little diamond thing in two steps okay that kind of makes a little bit of sense with the thread there's a there's a lot of different ways you could do this but uh, again I'm three spaces one two and three spaces away so this is going to be it's going to appear like a six step trellis overall you do want your thread to be above so you can see i just sort of you know put my needle up to the top of that stitch so i would be above here and now i'm just working the trellis up until I meet that previous stitch so it's kind of gonna appear like a six step trellis and then from there I'm just gonna sneak my needle down through that valley so my thread is hidden and it sort of appears like it was done in one continuous step and nobody's gonna know the difference except all of y'all watching on YouTube so here's what I'm talking about the um, the other method of tying on and off I sometimes tie on like this too but you just create a loop you go through two pleats create a loop go through that loop twice and you pull or tight and it's secured you, you can use that method to secure on or off of your pleats that works wonderfully and so I've used that method to secure back on and I'm coming up to you know in that valley in between where that last stitch let off so I can make it a you know the other half of that diamond once again I'm doing a three-step trellis going down so it looks like a six-step total for the top part of this diamond so I've got one more 
more stitch I'm going to untwist all that thread and then now I'm going to be doing that same outline stitch doing all of you know keeping my thread above all of my stitches to have that same angle that we've been doing for all of the others and I'm gonna just take that until the end of the row I'm testing this out I'm doing a slower speed now I have inserted like the steps for the next row into this for those of y'all who like the videos faster like I do <laughs> and of course I'm gonna have timestamps down in the description box below for everything as well but some of you have requested to kind of see my work and more of real time so here we're testing it out and seeing how the video does sorry that's my phone so now we are doing the opposite so I believe this one is now called the stem stitch. It doesn't matter what the name is, but the concept is you're going to keep the thread, your floss, um, below your needle now because you want the opposite angle. So again, you don't have to memorize this stuff. As you can see, I have not memorized the outline versus the stem, but you, it's good to know the concept and the con, you know, the actual ne what name goes to what concept. You don't need to memorize that, but the knowing the concept is where it's at and you don't have to memorize the concept you can just put that thread down angle it down and then see which way you got to put your needle to keep it down so you can see i've just angled my thread down and to keep that stitch there i'm going to need to do it above does that make sense i hope it does because i for one do not like memorizing things it's just like wasted brain space <laughs> <laughs> it's just good to know the concept so you don't have to memorize things. Why do that to yourself, right? So basically I'm doing the reverse now. I've come to the uh, end of this where I've got my diamond going. I'm going to do my last stitch here. And now I'm going to do six step trellis all the way down. That way my peak is at the same point that it is at the top. So I've got a, I'm going to have a top peak and a bottom peak. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't keep watching <laughs> so you can see that's where my peak is gonna go so I have got um, you know the same peak so you're going to be going spanning that over three no four four pleating threads if you haven't noticed I have not typed up the voiceover for this I'm trying to explain it in real time it's a different style of video we're gonna see how it goes over so there I've done my six steps and I'm just gonna do one cable stitch over, that will be my peak, and then I'm going to go up six steps to the, you know, so I can complete that stem stitch to the other side of this design. Is it six? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sorry, seven steps. It's a seven step trellis, not six steps. My bad. So there's my cable stitch, and I'm going to be doing that whole stem stitch, keep, you know, your thread below, and do that until the end of the row. And now, to complete the bottom of these three rows, I'm going to be doing another row of the outline stitch, or at least what I have memorized as the outline stitch being the one with the thread above. Oh, I hope I didn't get them backwards. And I'm just going to do that until I meet up with the diamond. And then I'm going to send my thread. Of course, I've got a little bit of a mess right here. <laughs> Sometimes that happens when you're dealing with, with especially with three um, strands of floss. Sometimes that happens. You just got to like, you got to sort her out. But now I'm going to send my thread. Um, needle down and then tie it off in the back so I can pick it up on the other side. So here I am, I've tied on and I've picked it up on the other side, again doing that outline stitch, the one where the the floss is above your needle and um, doing that until the edge, until the end of the row. Now, I am going to be continuing those little peaks, I'm going to be doing those again. Basically this whole smocking plate is symmetric across that that diamond so if you were to fold the diamond in half vertically the smocking plate was going to be symmetric so an easy way of figuring out where the you know where are those those uh peaks are going to go is to start at the bottom of that diamond peak okay because you know that one's going to end up there and then from there you can continue doing that half just you're going to do one cable at the bottom you're going to go back up to the um you know back up the two spaces to um to do those three stitches if i can get the words out <laughs> so you can see i'm doing one cable stitch and then i'm doing another cable stitch on top of that and then i'm going to do another cable stitch below that and i'm going to continue with this pattern the same that we did on that top row 
I'm going to continue with this pattern, but this is an easy way to figure out where the placement needs to go on those pleats so everything is symmetric. I'm just going to continue that pattern until the very end, and then I'm going to pick up again in the middle, that middle diamond, and I'm just going to flip my work over, okay? So I'll be working with the bottom of the shirt, you know, facing me in the top of the shirt away from me, reverse of how I usually work. And that's an easy way to find the placement and uh, just continue that row until it's done. And then lastly, I finished up this whole thing with the cable stitch. I don't think I filmed that because I don't have any footage of it, but it's just a cable stitch. You're just gonna do it like we did on the top row and that's gonna finish out your design. Now, anytime, it's a good rule that anytime you skip more than a full space, okay? Um, so in this case, we've only skipped full spaces, so we don't need to back smock anything except for the diamond. The diamond's the only spot, and you can see it's kind of poofing up there. The diamond is the only spot where we have skipped more than a full space. So two half rows is a full space. And I'm going to start like one of the um, previous rows and I'm just gonna do a kind of a sloppy cable stitch. What I have found works best, and you can see I'm gonna tie on using that loop method and I'm just using some DMC 50 weight thread. It doesn't really matter so much what thread you use. I kind of like it to be a little bit on the lighter side. So I wouldn't go as light as doing like 80 weight thread or anything like that, but something around 50 or 60 weight works generally pretty well. I stick with a lighter color, so white works really well. And when I say a sloppy cable stitch, I have found that that works the best. By no means do you need to make sure that the thread doesn't have any gaps. Nobody's gonna be looking at it. And you kind of want it to be on the looser side. If you pull it too tight, you're it's going to show a little bit of an indent. The indent's going to kind of add up to be a line, okay? So if you do it a little bit sloppy, like I keep saying, um, you don't have that line that you, you get otherwise. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think if, if you've experienced that line, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I just keep it a little bit on the sloppy side and that, that works for me with avoiding that little bit of an indent line there. And so I'm just going to go from one side of the diamond until the other and I know I'm to the, sorry, it's my phone again. I know I'm to the other side of the diamond because I've passed where I tied off that floss. That's fairly easy. So I'm just going to go up. I'm only skipping, you know, two rows. So you can tie off if you want to. I'm not going to here. I don't think it's going to be that, you know, that big of a mess. You're going to have, if you tie off, you're going to have two extra tails versus if you just go up, you're going to have that little bit of a, of a gap there, that little length to each their own. It's so when you do, if you want to tie off, that makes you happy, go for it. So I just tied back on. I just, you know, well, I didn't tie off, but what I did is I did my loops to have that secured and I'm just going to leave that little bit of length there. So I avoid having two tails. Um, again, I'm going over doing that sloppy cable stitch and I'm going to be doing this for the second row and I'm gonna be doing it one more time for the third row and that will be enough to secure the diamond in place. And basically with back smocking, like I said, a good rule of thumb is anytime you skip more than a half a space. So, or sorry, more than a full space, which is two half spaces. So you can go, you know, if you start on row one and you skip a half space, which is row two, and you go down to row three, which is another half space, you generally do not need a back smock. But if row four is another half space, now you've skipped more than a more than a full a full row. You've skipped one and a half full rows. Okay, so at this point, you will need a back smock. That's generally the rule of thumb is is the full space row. Man, I sound like I'm getting tongue tied. <laughs> and you can see how that just sort of tidies things up. And at this point, I can take out my um, pleating threads and my smocking and all that jazz is done. Now the last thing, uh, the last little bit of embellishment on this thing is that you can, if you look in the photos, you can see there's some little blue embellishment on the sleeves. What I did, and I mentioned this in the construction video, is that I lengthened my stitch a little bit on the sleeve and I did a machine stitch to secure the sleeve, or just to, to, to secure the hem of the sleeve. Now what that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to go back and forth. You can see I'm taking them from one side of the stitch and then I'm going on the other side of the stitch. And that's gonna give me like a little 
scallop effect, okay? I'm just using one strand of DMC embroidery floss. Looking back, I think maybe two strands would have been better, but um, I just used one strand of floss and I went back and forth, back and forth, and that gave me the appearance of the embellishment. I have no idea what the actual embellishment is on that sleeve. Um, the photos are not that great, but that gave me something that resembled it. So I hope this video was helpful. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.